Well, good morning, everybody, and a very warm welcome to Sunday Worship with St. Bartholomew's. It is the 31st of May, and today is Pentecost Sunday. And it's really good if you can join us today for worship. It's a beautiful day, the sun is shining, and we're here to worship the living God. So let's pray as we begin our worship. Loving God, we thank you for this day, this beautiful day. We thank you for this opportunity to join together in worship. We thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit. And we say, come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your people and kindle in us the fire of your love. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Please join with me as we sing together, Consuming Fire. Rather than a confession this week, we're simply going to ask God to fill us with his Holy Spirit once again. So if you'd like to join in with the responses after each line, please say, fill us with your spirit. As we wait in silence, fill us with your spirit. As we listen to your word, Fill us with your spirit. 
as we worship you in majesty, fill us with your spirit. As we long for your refreshing, fill us with your spirit. As we long for your renewing, fill us with your spirit. As we long for your equipping, fill us with your spirit. As we long for your empowering, fill us with your spirit. The collect the special prayer for this Pentecost Sunday. Holy Spirit, sent by the Father, ignite in us your holy fire. Strengthen your children with the gift of faith. Revive your church with the breath of love and renew the face of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, Sue is going to bring us our Bible reading this week, which is from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. Thank you, Sue. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now, they were, stay they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the 11, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk as you suppose. It is only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Those of you who know me will know that I'm a bit of a pyromaniac. Any opportunity of a fire and I'm there. Barbecues, fire pit, campfire, even candles. Maybe like this one. Or maybe like this. I just love fire. I suspect I'm not the only one who feels this way. I've been attracted to fire for as long as I can remember. And on occasion, it's gotten me into trouble. But there's something about fire. And it still holds a fascination for me the way it glows, the way it consumes, the way it lights up the darkness, the way it spreads. 
And fire is, of course, one of the images connected with the Holy Spirit, who we celebrate today at Pentecost. The Holy Spirit is vital. In fact, without the Holy Spirit, we wouldn't be here. It's the Holy Spirit who draws us to Jesus. It's the Holy Spirit that enables us to see our need of him. It's the Holy Spirit who empowers us to say Jesus is Lord. So we can't even become a Christian without the Holy Spirit. He's the one Jesus promised to send. And as he said, he will be with you and he will be in you. The Holy Spirit is God's empowering presence. There's lots of images used to describe the Spirit. He's described as a gentle dove, a powerful but elusive wind, the breath of God, the cleansing water, the refreshing rain, the comforter and the strengthener. But today, as always, I'd like to think about fire. Fire gives us warmth. If you've been joining us for our morning prayer on Facebook or YouTube, you'll know that every morning we pray. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you. Set our hearts on fire with love for you. It's the Holy Spirit who sets our hearts on fire with love for God. The burning fire of the love of God is poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. This has been the experience of Christians down the ages. Think of John Wesley at Aldersgate, who said he felt his heart strangely warmed, his life and ministry transformed. It is possible to become cold-hearted towards God it is possible to be indifferent towards God. Perhaps we've let our hearts grow cold over the years. It is possible just to go through the motions or to serve God just out of a sense of duty. But the Holy Spirit warms our hearts towards God. He fills us with love for God. He melts our hearts. He makes the difference between knowing about God and knowing God. He enables us to say, Abba, Father. And God is not just a distant, mysterious being, but our Father in heaven. So what difference does the Holy Spirit make? He sets our hearts on fire with the love of God. And then fire gives us light. It's the Holy Spirit who enables us to see who Jesus really is. He opens our eyes. As Jesus says in John's Gospel, he's the spirit of truth. And Jesus says that the spirit will lead us into all truth. I don't think this means we'll become walking encyclopedias. It means the truth about Jesus, that he died for you, that he is alive, that he loves you that he is the Son of God, that he is the Lord. It means the difference between just reading the stories about Jesus as the words on a page or hearing them to know Jesus. We can be merrily going along, coming to church, joining in, and then one day the penny drops and we realise as we hear about Jesus that we believe it. Our eyes are opened. We can see that's the Holy Spirit. This was the disciples' experience. The Holy Spirit is the person who leads us to Christ. He's like a spotlight that shines on Jesus and the Father too. He doesn't want the attention. He just says, look at Jesus. Look at the Father. Look at Abba. The more we receive of the Holy Spirit, the more we will know the Saviour and the clearer we'll see the Father. What difference does the Holy Spirit make? He enables us to see the truth about Jesus and God the Father. And then finally, fire.
fire spreads. Fire is contagious. From the tiniest spark or the smallest glowing ember can come a huge conflagration. Which is why little boys or little girls shouldn't play with matches. Before the Holy Spirit came, the disciples were a group of frightened, timid, confused men and women in one place, Jerusalem. They had seen the risen Jesus, but they didn't really know what to do with that. They still didn't get it. How is it that this small, timid group became the worldwide family that we call the church? The answer is the Holy Spirit. Like fire, he cannot be contained. He wants to spread. He is dynamic. He sends us out. What difference does the Holy Spirit make? All the difference in the world. So the fire of the Holy Spirit warms our hearts. He gives us light and helps us to see Jesus. And in the power of the Spirit, we are sent out to spread the good news about Jesus. It's the Holy Spirit who is with us and in us during this lockdown. And the Holy Spirit will lead us out. And as I said a couple of weeks ago, the Holy Spirit is for everyone. And like fire, there is always more. How do we get more? Well, on one level, it's quite simple. We just ask. God is longing to give his spirit to his people. And God promises to give the spirit more and more to those who come to him earnestly and persistently in surrender. And then there's no telling what God can do. So come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your people and kindle in us the fire of your love. The fire of love for God the Father and Jesus our Lord. We need more of you. Amen. So we come to our prayers of intercession. If you'd like to join in with the responses, when I say, Lord, come to bless us, please respond and fill us with your spirit. So we pray to God to fill us with his spirit. Generous God, we thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit. We ask that we may be strengthened to serve you better. Lord, come to fill us, come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. We thank you, Lord, for the wisdom of your Holy Spirit. We ask that you would make us wise to understand your will. Give wisdom to all in authority as we seek to make the steps out of this lockdown. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. We thank you for the peace of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to keep us confident of your love wherever you call us. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. We thank you for the healing of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to bring reconciliation and wholeness where there is division, sickness and sorrow. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. We thank you for the gifts of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to equip us for the work which you have given us. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. We thank you for the fruit of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to reveal in our lives the love of Jesus. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. We thank you for the breath of your Holy Spirit given us by the risen Lord. We ask you to keep the whole church living and departed in the joy of eternal life. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. 
Generous God, you sent your Holy Spirit upon your Messiah at the River Jordan and upon the disciples in the upper room. In your mercy, fill us with your Spirit. Hear our prayer and make us one in heart and mind to serve you with joy forever. Amen. Well, I'm really pleased now that some of our children and young people are going to lead us in the Lord's Prayer. Thank you. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. On earth as in heaven. And give us today, today our day. daily bread. Forgive us our sins. Forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation. And deliver, deliver us from, from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. 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 Thank you, that was wonderful. Speaking of prayer, I spoke last week about an initiative called Open Heaven, and we're going to see a short video now talking about that initiative. It's a vision to pray for every street in Coventry during the month of June. Have you ever wondered about an open heaven? God's grace, God's love, God's glorious redemption, his power, his peace poured out without measure. What if heaven opened and he outpoured his splendour? Could a revival break out for all to see, like we've heard of and read of throughout history, an outbreak of his sovereignty right here in Coventry? In our day and our time, here and now, could we stir more if we seek more? Might God move more if we do more? If we united, align in our prayer, from each assembly, each single congregation, fighting and winning the battle in the heavens, the church rising up, interceding together, getting out beyond her walls, praying with one voice, Lord, let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Believers from the small church, the large church, the parish and the city church, traditional church, contemporary church, the bride of Christ, one church, ready, without hesitation, calling out in undivided declaration. Right now, the times have changed massively, daily walks with our families for some fresh air and our sanity. As we head out, let's cry out, let's pray actively, calling out for Coventry. Every place that we see, every place that we visit The places where you might find life crime on the rise The places that are poverty ridden where we want to see quality living Praying, hope, speaking, blessing, declaring, scripture contending For every home, every high rise flat, every gated palace, every student pad Not for the bricks but for the souls inside Pausing to agree for the places of power for our council in our city in this challenging hour the points of community, whether currently occupied or empty. The schools, the colleges, the university, the places in our city now, COVID abandoned, but before long to be filled again, renewed and reopened. The places of leisure and halls of connection, the parks and the libraries, the hubs of recreation, the office blocks and businesses, the places in need of urgent reconciliation. The places of care, the surgeries and hospitals in the places of obvious need and where need is more hidden, all covered in the matchless name of Jesus. So, this June in our city, here in Coventry, we are inviting you to enter into this move of unity, to play your part and take up some streets. As we prayer walk every place where people move and meet, we want to pray the heavens open, this is no time to be discreet. Every avenue and close, every highway and crescent, praying, God, come and visit us, pour out your presence. Every cold de sac and road where people live, from CV1 to CV6. So rise up, church, now's the time. Get involved, go by yourself or in your household. Head to the app and earmark your roots, speaking freedom and blessing and Bible truth.
Let's raise our game, let's proclaim his name And take the next step forward towards a city impacted A city transformed, a city saved With this storm that we are setting On the streets that we are stepping We are praying, we are believing to see God Open heaven We're going to sing again now, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. You may notice this is an earlier recording, a pre-lockdown haircut. We're going to sing together. Be still for the presence of the Lord. Just to remind you that this evening there is the Coventry Diocese Pentecost service. That's at six o'clock and you can find it on the Coventry Diocese website. Here's a short message from Bishop Christopher about that service. Twenty twenty Spirit Vision is the name of our Pentecost praise service. It's going to be a wonderful opportunity for us to gather from right across the diocese to celebrate the remarkable and wonderful ways in which God is working among us during these strange times that we're living through. There'll be some great things happening in the service. I'm especially looking forward to a song that we'll hear towards the end, which is being produced by the, the same team that orchestrated the Coventry Blessing song that you might have uh, listened into uh, a few weeks ago. So I invite you to join us in celebrating Pentecost together as a whole diocese. Okay. 
Well, thank you once again, everybody, for joining us for worship on this Pentecost Sunday. Thank you to our regulars at St Bartholomew's and to any visitors and guests. And a special welcome once again to the residents and staff at the Holywell Park Care Home. It's always good for you to join us. A blessing as we conclude our time together. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those that you love today and always. Filled with the Spirit's power, go in the light and peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.